Dirty Dealings, Corporate Battles, Consumer Wars. This is Evening 5. Petronas posted a 32% fall in fourth quarter FY 2023 net profit to 16.6 billion ringgit due to lower average realised prices. Meanwhile, revenue tumbled 12% to 91.7 billion ringgit. The quarterly numbers brought the state oil and gas giant's net to earnings for FY 2023 down by 20.6% to 80.7 billion ringgit from FY 2022's record high of 101.6 billion ringgit as revenues slipped 7.7% to 343.6 billion ringgit from 372.3 billion ringgit. That said, this is the second best earnings in 20 years. It announced a dividend payment of 32 billion ringgit to the government versus 40 billion ringgit in FY 2023. Looking ahead, Petronas expects the oil and gas market to face uncertainties due to slower global demand, while supply risks are set to heighten following increased geopolitical tension in the Middle East and Europe. Tan Sri Tengku Mohamed Taufik, the oil major's president and group CEO, noted that average prices for oil in 2023 were 20% lower than in 2022, while the energy industry is experiencing a shift towards cleaner solutions. On another note, he also confirmed that Petronas is scaling back in Mexico by exiting eight exploration blocks as part of its regular portfolio consolidation exercise. He did not confirm which assets will be disposed of. A former director of Consortium Zenith Construction admitted that he had amended statements given to the MACC in 2018. This was regarding the two million ringgit sum said to have been given to then Penang Chief Minister Lim Guan Ng. Dato Zarul Ahmad Mohamed Zulkifli, who is facing impeachment proceedings, disclosed that when he gave his statement to the Anti Graft Agency on four occasions in 2018, he made no mention of the DAP leader. The statements were regarding the monies given to businessman Jinya Naraja and Dato Sri Najib Raza in a bid to halt investigations against Zaro and his firm in relation to the undersea tunnel project. He said he only mentioned Lim's name for the first time when he gave a statement to the MACC in 2019. After reading a witness statement tendered by Ibrahim Sahari, another consortium Zenith construction director, in a cheating case brought against Nya Naraja. Zaro Ahmad was called as a witness in the other trial but ended up not being asked to take the witness stand. He also admitted that as a witness in a trial, he was not supposed to discuss the case with other witnesses or read their witness statements. Kwasa Land, a wholly owned subsidiary of the EPF and master developer of Kwasa Damansara, announced a partnership with Impiana Land and Development for 47 acres of residential development. Kwasa Land MD Dato Adenan Mohamed Yusuf said the development, called Serene Kwasa Damansara, will be developed with surrounding green spaces, great connectivity to transportation networks, and also designed with the family units in mind. Meanwhile, Impiana MD Dato Haris on Hussein said the company is excited to partner Kwasa Land as it embarks on a dynamic and future-forward residential development at Kwasa Damansara. The project is Impiana's second in the township. With a gross development value of 1.5 billion ringgit, it will be developed in two phases. The first phase, called Serene South Lakes, will occupy 30 acres and entails 141 bungalows, link villas and semi-detached homes to be completed in the fourth quarter of 2020. The second phase will entail the development of the park, consisting of two mid-rise blocks with 311 units and Serene Hillside, which will have four low-rise and mid-rise condominiums with 468 units. Finistra Corp secured a contract worth 369.95 million ringgit to develop three blocks of suites apartments with 1,558 units, along with related facilities in Bukit Jalil. In a filing with Borsa Malaysia, Binastra announced that its subsidiary, Binastra Builders, had accepted the letter of award from Exim Jalil to construct main building works and infrastructure projects. The project is set to commence within 41 months. Previously, 
known as Comintel Corp. Benastra is currently undertaking a rights issue, followed by a private placement to raise approximately 90 million ringgit for the acquisition of construction equipment and working capital. Benastra underwent rebranding under its major shareholder, Datuk Jackson Tan, who was involved in construction projects before becoming a shareholder in December 2022. He has been its managing director since January 2023. Benastra's share price closed 2.94% lower at 1 ringgit 65 cent for a market capitalization of 746.6 million ringgit. Digital bank Boost Bank has seen an additional injection of 8.5 million ringgit by its two shareholders. Boost Bank is a 40-60 digital bank venture by RHB Bank and Boost Holdings, an indirect subsidiary of Axiata Group. RHB Bank has spent an additional 3.4 million ringgit in cash to subscribe for an additional 3.4 million new Boost Bank shares to maintain its 40% equity interest in the digital bank. The lender said in a Boris file that the 3.4 million ringgit investment was sourced from internally generated funds. It explained that the purpose of the additional subscription is to enable Boost Bank to finance its operational and capital expenditures for the first half of 2024, while ensuring compliance with minimum capital requirements. Concurrently, Boost Holdings has also subscribed for an additional 5.1 million new Boost Bank shares for 5.1 million ringgit to maintain its 60% equity interest. Post-transaction, Boost Bank's paid-up capital is about 215 million ringgit, comprising some 215 million shares. RHB Bank's shares were unchanged at 5 ringgit 62 cent, while Axiata settled 0.4% lower at 2 ringgit 82 cent.